Ladies and gentlemen, if this is working, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, welcome uh, to the second uh, lecture in the series of AA's public program. Uh, my first remark is to please switch off your telephones. Um, and second, uh, but most important, um, is to say that I'm really pleased to uh, introduce Francine Hube founder and creative director of Meccano Architecten in Delft. Uh, during what I believe is her first performance here at AA, she will take us through 30 years of her professional history, uh, starting with the birth of Meccano out of the winning entry for a housing block in the center of Delft, uh, Rotterdam, I should say. Uh, the following years, uh, Francine was at the forefront of the architectural reinvention of the Dutch housing landscape, and long before sustainability was a hot topic, she introduced an integrated approach uh, of innovative design and engineering, which would eventually result in a key project of the Meccano repertoire, the library of the Technical University in Delft, uh, introducing jet lag architecture as a constraint of the contemporary practice. Francine Huben's signature is known for its contextual sense, extending far beyond Dutch boundaries. Today, Meccano has grown to an international practice of 90 men and women, headed by one of the few women architects of eminence. Its projects vary from a small chapel in Rotterdam, a 6,000 seat theater in Taiwan, to the design of Birmingham's public library, which is currently under construction. Tonight, she will share the view and philosophy behind her work. So please give a warm welcome to Francine Hube. Mountains, and I try to explain to you why it's called Dutch Mountains. This is my country, the Netherlands. 70% uh, is below sea level, with all these uh, this parts, which of course is all the rivers. I was born here, very safe, on the more uh, rolling hills landscape. The highest mountain here is 300 meters high. Belgium and Germany. But now I live here in Rotterdam and it's a very flat landscape and I consider the buildings in the landscape as the Dutch mountain. This is the city of Rotterdam and I consider it as the uh, Mount Everest of the Dutch mountain. Um, for me, uh, the soil of the country, of the size, is very important. projects in the Netherlands, the Dutch Open Air Museum and the library in Delft, to me they are really made out of the clay, so to uh, uh, of Europe. Like this one is almost like uh, you put a paint in the ground, in the soil, and a building comes up. Or this one, uh, the Dutch Open Air Museum, uh, is made of 67 different kinds of bricks realize that we have so many rivers, we live in a delta, all these rivers bring different clay, and from these different clays we used to uh, burn different bricks. And this symbolizes the Dutch Open Air Museum, what is about the history of my country. Of course, most of us uh, know it from the library, of the expansion of the uh, National Historic Museum, what is occupied, occupied, occupied uh, this uh, open air museum, and it's the most discussed building in the Netherlands at this moment. It's, I, I, know, I don't expect <coughs> for some sort of political reason that it will ever be here. Um, of course, I'm speaking as an 
architect, but I was always interested um, in landscaping, but also in the museum. At this moment, we do uh, we design, we did design one of the biggest parks. We want to have stations of the, the Belmont. Very recent project of the office with the theater in the, in the eastern part of the Netherlands, where we really um, uh, trace with two colors, red and white, and, this, and, and the beauty of the surrounding landscape. But this is a, a very interesting and curious space. I did try it because I'm now working in these 30 years. Uh, to me, it's also seen as crossing borders. Uh, one important thing for me was always crossing my own borders, uh, always changing the limits. Also, not only doing architecture, but also going into landscape and into building and urbanism, going into interior. Uh, and at a certain point, uh, I think from the, the year 2000, I also decided go, or I, I was asked many times to go abroad, and in the year 2000, I said, okay, let's do it. So, I also had this picture from flying to Seoul, and it's crossing borders, of course, first time you fly out, and you're asked to do competition, this was a competition from the, the project Michel Raal de Lausanne, the competition the Seisma one, And also you become friends and get to collect files. This is the library in Denmark in Ireland, collect files. Uh, we did the theater in Casablanca, Morocco, and the um, And at a certain moment we also started to win. This was a, um, a theater uh, with a conference center, what I will explain later on in um, Paris. And as you see this idea of I will also explain this idea about Dutch mountains and how I consider Dutch mountains when I export them. And uh, uh, yeah, these two competitions were very important. One also the winning the uh, uh, winning the center for of the performing arts in Kaohsiung, uh, what is I think maybe even the biggest performing arts center of what is built in one time in the world. This was not a competition, but now also people start to choose just for you. This is a um, <coughs> golf club house in Korea, Seoul, near Seoul, uh, what is now under construction. And of course, what was uh, very important, the library in Birmingham, what I will explain to you. Everything I do, I. Uh, one, two cities are very important to me. is the city of Delft. It's a city where I did study and where is the Meccano office. The other one is very important. is my own house in the city of Rotterdam. It's just 20 kilometers from each other. It's, it's a 20 minutes drive. And the city of Rotterdam is, I, I consider it as a lab laboratory. And it's to me a very inspiring city. Also the view, how I look to this lake. I'm <coughs> exactly in the middle of the lake. But also how the river um, goes through the city and also what water means and views, a room with a view uh, is a very important theme in my work. Uh, I also like to explore uh, uh, in crossing borders new things like what I did with uh, mobility. I called mobility a room with a view and I became the, not only a professor but also the director and curator of the first international architecture biennale in Rotterdam in the year 2007. But if I give a lecture on mobility, I need another one hour. But it's a very interesting theme, how mobility is uh, changing in a way our um, profession. And, to and I, I had the idea that it was ne never, uh, we also don't learn it in the school. That's what I did. Uh, 
uh, in a way with my own office. This is my office. Uh, it's along this canal. This is the recent book where you see the chapter. And for me it was fun to also, because I had never been to the AA, I have to be, uh, I have to tell you, but it almost feels when I walk here through your own school, it almost feels like going through my own building, the Meccano building. Uh, it's a similar atmosphere, um, uh, but it's also um, yeah, an inspiring spot. For me it's also interesting these buildings that there are we are in a building that's already two or three hundred years old, and this also this canal, but it's even long, uh, older, and, the, and and it's still good. Um, crossing borders means also um, the whole office. Um, as I told you, for me it's very important that the office is international. We have about still half who didn't shrink yet, like other offices did in Holland and maybe also in the UK. Uh, it's very international, it's interdisciplinary, so we have architect, landscape artists, we even have artists, we have um, interiors in restoration, I think is also very important. Um, we're bilingual, because a lot of people don't speak Dutch, so it's Dutch and it's English. Um, and for, uh, we're also quite passionate, 40% female, although we, in a way it was never our intention. But it's quite Um, as Stein uh, told you, it's, it's, uh, we don't have, we are not exploring or exporting a certain form or a certain architectonic language um, or, um, uh, or, or brand architecture in a form. Uh, but how I did read, uh, I did write my book uh, Contrast Complexity Composition, 10 Statements. I think it's, it's not this book, it's another one. But I, I, I said 10 statements for me are important in, in, in my office, um, but also in, the, in, in my profession. And I want to share these 10 statements with the whole team. And so for me, that's the guideline of our office and not a certain formal language, although you can see that it's mechanical. One of the, um, one of the, um, points was already, um, what was the co point three, collective responsibility for sustainability. What we did already, uh, maybe now it's very political okay, but we did it already for many years. Uh, and we have many prize winning projects on different scales to be um, uh, durability, is that good word? I even tried to run my office in, a, in, a, in such an environmentally conscious way. Okay, that was the introduction. Um, what I want to um, show to you with my uh, Dutch mountains, I want to show you some of the public buildings. And I want to show you how these Dutch mountains, this idea, how it works in the Netherlands, in Spain, in UK, and in Taiwan. And at the same time, how I want to make uh, in a way, a team is looking for identity in a world of globalization. Uh, and at the same time, if I make public buildings, I want to create unforgettable collective space <coughs> for public money also. This is 1969, the Technical University in uh, Delft. I started to study in 1974. Uh, a lot of universities were built in this period. This was the same university in 1996 when our library was uh, built and realized. And it really changed the whole atmosphere of this technical university. It also shows how um, you could work with the kind of eco-engineering, how architecture and landscaping can merge into each other, that a building cannot be, can be a non-building, but be a landscape. How you can make it a public space, uh, a kind of unforgettable collective space, almost like a cathedral. Um, it was not a high-tech building, like more the buildings maybe like uh, Foster or whatever. It was kind of uh, 
eco-technology, kind of green engineering, uh, making it, uh, creating a new identity. And I really uh, think it's very important also to work from the first scratch also with your engineers. Uh, this is cathedral-like space, unforgettable space, but it's still working. At this moment, we are uh, already um, redoing some of the interior because, of course, libraries are changing so much. I like to make a combination in my work of uh, creating identities, new identities, is that you do something with a combination with traditional values in combination with um, innovation. Like we did with, because this is a library of a technical university, that means that most of the books, uh, although they, uh, or, uh, they want to have all the books in a, in a storage, that you just ask for a book and then you get it immediately. What we did, we took one million of the books that are underneath this floor. That's about 80,000 we took out and we put it on this uh, hanging uh, bookshelf. There's a kind of theater light uh, behind it. I was also much influenced by, again, crossing borders. Uh, I was very well connected to the theater world and you start to use how they make uh, stages or what kind of materials they use. You can see it in my work. and the study rooms inside, getting just light from above, kind of quiet space. <coughs> and the cone that was sticky, like pinned, like a push pin to this new landscape. And it almost fixes the building to the, uh, in, in the urban situation. building that became a, la uh, a landscape. Maybe it's quite now quite normal, but this was in, in the early 90s when we did this. That was very unique. And it's still a happy building. It, uh, it be really became a social hub. This is a very recent picture. I always say they should clean better the stairs. Uh, this is a very recent picture of the building. It also became a tourist attraction. Um, it's fun. We don't have so many times snow. I think similar here in London. But if you, you should go to this building when there is snow. It became also the inspiration uh, because this is our building. This is a, was the existing uh, 60s building. These are all these 60s buildings. And we changed that big highway, not a highway, but this, this big road with the sparkling lot into a um, park with a new um, tramway, a regional tramway will be here. And the idea of the university was to concentrate and bring all the university buildings more around this park. My idea was always that these are the different faculties of this university, and my experience was that every faculty was just looking at themselves, very um, egocentric. And the Faculty of Architecture, and the Faculty of Civil Engineering, uh, this was more electro-engineering, and what I did try to do with this idea of the park was trying to um, bring all these faculties and that all the older so the students and the staff would meet more, because when I work, I really work together with all these engineers, and not just fo being uh, focused on, on the faculty of architecture. For me also, I get more inspiration from all of these students than from my own these students. course, what happened, or oh, this was the way it was, and we changed it. And this is not Photoshop, it's reality. Uh, of course, this picture was made already a year ago, it's now finished, and it really looks nice. This is the way it was. Now here, again, not Photoshop. And now it uh, became a very pleasant space. Um, only the only thing what happened, what was in a way very dramatic, was the fire of the Faculty of Architecture in 2008. And you have to realize that uh, the students of the Faculty of Architecture was the biggest uh, faculty, so most uh, students, 3,000. And also the faculty what had most of the girls. 
uh, because of course it was a technical university, it's more male dominated. So it was, it was a disaster on many, um, uh, in many ways. And what was also a disaster that now, a uh, disaster now, the, the, this faculty of architecture moved more into the center of the city, a little bit in that direction. So that this, this faculty, what I think should, as architects, we should just bring all these disciplines together, now decided themselves to move out of, of, the, of the university, what I think intellectually we should not do it. Okay, but it happened, I could not change it. Okay, now I will show you um, another project. Uh, the municipal offices and the central station in Delft, uh, again in the city where Meccano is um, based. For me, the city of Delft is in a way a very famous city. It's a, the, 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 the city of the painter Vermeer, right? uh, also the, the girl with the pearl. This very famous city, our office is based here. Here, here. Here, here, I mean, don't know, just this point right here. Okay. And um, we used to have a, a viaduct with a railroad on top of it. It will go underneath, it will, there will be a tunnel. So again, this is this old city, and this is the whole extension of the new city. And this will be a tunnel, and uh, Joan Desquet, the Spanish urbanist, made a master plan to um, uh, what will happen around that tunnel. These are the two main churches of Delft. Again, our office is based here. This is the, used to be the very old city hall, of course, it's much too small. Uh, and they decided to make on this track, this will be the track of the tunnel, to put on top of that, it's the railway station and the city hall. Quite big program, a lot of functions. How do you combine two functions? A railway station and the municipal, and the, uh, municipal offices. Um, at the same time, it should give identity, it should be a building with an identity uh, for the citizens, for the staff, but also for all the travelers. And not only people who come home at their own city, but also people, um, uh, tourists. Of course, it's also very important tourist city. Now, what kind of image? Th these are traditional images of uh, Dutch uh, city halls or uh, railway stations, but I could not do anything with it. Uh, yeah, for you, it may be nothing special here in London to have an underground railway station or because you have so many subways, but in Holland it was really new. So I said it's more like a subway station, and if I like one subway station, it's one more of the, uh, to create a kind of impressive space, like for, for instance they did in uh, Moscow. Uh, and at the same time, Delft is of course also the city of Delft Blue, the Delft Blue tiles the Delft Blue Ceramics, the Delft Blue China. So our idea is to, uh, is to create again an unforgettable space to welcome travelers and tourists to Delft and a living room for citizens because we should have a city hall and a railway station hall. So we made, this was the underground station and we tried to make two halls. This was the competition we won in 2006. And on top of these two halls, we created the, uh, these are the two halls. This is the railway station hall. This is a big span because the tunnel is underneath. And this is the space, the idea of the space of the city hall with the desk functions for the uh, citizens. On top of these two halls, we took, because our, the new spot will be here. This is an old map of the city of uh, Delft. Again, here is our office. We took a piece, symbolic, a piece of this uh, city, old city, and did put it on top of these two halls. Realized the city of Delft is, we have these big or rather small canals, and in between we have all these alleys, and these alleys and, 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 and smaller kind of pasture-like uh, spaces that bring light into these houses or into these buildings. That is the idea, that we have a street, like a, uh, a backbone, alleys, and then 
and this becomes then the, the concept of the office spaces. So it's a sandwich of an underground railway station, the uh, civil servant city we call it, and in between the two halls, foyers in between. And from that point you could make, this was the old uh, railway station, we will keep it as a car cafe, and it will connect to the new streetcar that will also bring you to the technical university. This was the idea of the image to make a total glass building, but glass not um, like here in the UK, because I sometimes say all the buildings in the UK are glass, but it was a glass that is maybe 60% closed, 40% open, and it's almost like a um, uh, kind of melted glass, so you can make more open and you have more closed glass, so transparent glass and you, so you see the whole construction above the tunnel, the two holes. Lotia de Yaida. Um, Yaida is uh, Lerida, it's Catalan, it's in between uh, Barcelona and um, Madrid. It's a very typical old Spanish city. The old city is a very rich history on top of the hill because of strategic reasons. Here in the, uh, when it's very clear weather, see the Pyrenees, you can see that, and around the city is a very a flat country, almost like Holland, with a lot of fruit trees. These are the fruit trees, um, the fruit orchards around the city. Uh, when I was there, I always had dinner with my client, and he always took me to different restaurants, and an important theme in this restaurant was Akifranem. And it means that in, in a, in a gast local gastronomic way, they uh, take fruit, they use fruit to make special food through the leaves or whatever. In a way, I will show you how we did, in a way, this local gastronomy. We used it in our own, in our own building. This is site. Um, this is the old city on the mountain. The, here is a river, but in a way it's more a river park. It's eight meters lower than the, the city because of uh, flooding. You can have 
strong flood issue. Here's a dam and here's a nature park. The new railway station, because uh, this was possible, this new uh, theater with conference center, because of the high speed connection between Barcelona and Madrid. This uh, the stop is here. And I don't know why, but I was coming from uh, Barcelona that day, and I considered it by standing here and feeling this very flat area in front of me, I felt it like the ocean, like in, 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 in uh, Barcelona, and it, uh, I considered this as the beach. It had these big grain silos in, in the landscape, and I called them ocean like it, just a little way I sometimes think. Um, so here you can see this, the railway station, the old city, the um, river, the River Sacred, the River Park, eight meters lower, you see here the height difference. And what we did try to do again is to make a dialogue between past and present, in a way what we also did with our building in Shell. There was a very ugly building next to it, and we had to expand it uh, with offices. And I will show you what we did. Again, here's our building. Our first ideas was when we, are, we make a foyer going to the theater or going to the conference, we want to give the people, the guests, a view to the uh, old city, framing the view. Another very important idea was the climate. It's very hot in the summer and more rainy and misty in the winter. So we wanted to uh, make a building that generates public space instead of giving shadows and shelter. That's why we made these big um, uh, canopies and big overhang, I don't know, cantilevers. Another thing what we did, as I told you, here was a very ugly building and we even did, didn't put it in our drawings, but we did extend these offices in this way that the offices are here and we made, on this side, we made a tribune. So you can sit here. Of course, the, the, the theater will be inside. We also made kind of outdoor theater space for free. For me, public space is very important. If you design a theater or a conference center, booking and logistics are very important. So it was in a way you had crowd handling and serving the crowd. And these two um, uh, flows should not cross each other. We make a dramatic way how to get in a way not only to the theater but also to the roof. As I explained to you, that the building we made in Delft, the library, is for me really made of the Dutch soil. This building is really made out of Spanish soil. It's more edgy, it's more hard, it's uh, of the color of Spanish soil. If we make these big cantilevers on the, to create public space on the ground floor, what to do on the top floor? So what we did to make a huge pergola on top of a kind of a new landscape on top of our building with three um, holes to get light into the north central space, I'll show you later, to make an extra public space, which was very successful. The colors of the fruit did inspire us. We did such research. This was the first team for when we did the competition. This was when we came more often there and we had this idea with, with all the fruit and ha having always these dinner, because dinner at two o'clock, whatever happens in Spain, two o'clock you have uh, dinner. Good dinner and good wine. Here's a side overview. It was still under construction. Big parking place underneath our feet. The, the offices, the extension of the offices, in a way, in, 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 uh, uh, making it uh, like a tribune like space. Side overview by evening. Uh, the evening footage, because I was, it was really the beach. You, uh, you, only, you see it from the. Um, 
it's, it's, uh, it's also the color of sand almost, uh, of soil, uh, the public space. But we also wanted to have palm trees, because it was my idea from Barcelona to uh, Lleida. And then here you see the ocean liners in the sea. Um, so we did find uh, palm trees that could handle the uh, winter. Of course, it's an item, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a generator of urban identity and how it fits into the existing city. Uh, how the color comes out of the building at night so is, is a big surprise for all the inhabitants. Here is where you enter. This is the ticket office. We did put the foyer so high, otherwise you could never exceed the river, was eight meters lower, kind of generating new public space, not only public building inside, but also public building outside. And the interaction with the public, in the glass, how it reflects. People sitting, start to sit on these uh, steps. The tribune, they're, they're sitting on an office of an ugly building. It became a new space. This is wha when the, the king and the queen opened to the building. So that's why they were all waiting for it. Going inside the building. It's a very close building from the outside. It's also because of the, 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 the hot sun. And it's very beautiful. Here you enter, and there you go, as I explained to the crowd handling of the build building. You go up by stairs, and with a big ramp, go, go to the foyer. <laughs> Underneath this big ramp, we have a uh, changing light. You can set the light in the color to you want. The changing light. Makes it also more. And going to the theater is also planeren, having a party. Entering the foyer, having a view, as I explained to you, to the castle, but also to the um, park, the river park. Constant presence of the historical city and the connection with it. Then, so you enter here. This is where it's the view, the foyer with the view to the old city and the river park. Then you enter here, what is always much more dramatic to enter a, a theater hall, an auditorium from above. It's, uh, of course, it's also a Spanish and a Dutch uh, budget, so it's not a very high uh, budget. So we did make all black. So we did cut out trees out of this uh, black walls it's light in it, and then in the roof, the ceiling is with leaves of birds and seeds and uh, apples and pears. And of course, you can also switch off the light and then it's totally black. This is when you enter, it's not so special to the It's the VIP space. You can open this window so you get light and a view to the whole building. multifunctional auditorium, concerts, business opera. Of course, it's, it's a small provincial city, so this, this multifunctionality is very important. Nice. The second auditorium, the 400, the other one was the 1,000 seating, more quiet space. Multifunctional space, where you see construction of the building combination of concrete and steel. The three, I don't know, what are they? The uh, light holes, what also gives identity to the roof. Steel construction, giving you a view to the river park from the floor. Kind of 
new public space on the rooftop for this space for the light tower. just after the opening by the king and queen, all black people and a white person as well. Privacy. And it became a very uh, pleasant, it really became the, the social hub of this new city. And if you ever go there, you can drink have drinks there every night until three or four o'clock in the morning. Backstage lights, of course, also very important because they serve in the crowd, but also, uh, so yeah, serve in the crowd is very important. All the new, all has to do with materials and expression. Here you see two icons of the city in combination with the river and how it reflects. Birmingham, second city, <coughs> UK, this is Birmingham, I have never been to Birmingham, when you are asked to give a vision for the new library, this is the existing library, a lot of this first uh, building, especially by uh, Prince Charles, because he said it's more a place to burn books than to, uh, than to read books, mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm not sure if I agree if I agree with him, but it's not a pleasant atmosphere inside. Um, the existing library has a significant collection. You have to realize that Birmingham, uh, of course, became, became a more poor city, but it, it has an enormous rich um, history, especially from the uh, period of industrialization. It was one of the most important cities worldwide with a lot of innovative ideas. They have a big safety collection. Um, but also realize this Birmingham, second city, many identities. For me, like I live in Rotterdam, it's like these kind of cities. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, people coming from all over the world and live there. You can also see that this is a picture from the existing uh, library. Uh, it's a very young city. I even believe that it's the youngest city of Europe many identities. It's very important to make a library for them, to let them more develop, to more educate. Not everybody has, a, as for instance, has internet at home or has a, a computer at home. If you read uh, in a book about tourism in the UK, Birmingham Second City has two pages. And I told them, you're, you're much more than the image, and then it's this image is some, and, uh, and Selfridge, which they, they always uh, show. I think, yeah, I think they're more than Selfridge. And I wa when I was there, I was the first time I was staying in this hotel, and I had to find my way to the theater, because it will not only be a library, it will be also a theater, and it's next to an existing theater. And I try to walk, because everywhere I come, I don't have a car. Uh, how the hell do I get there? Uh, it's, 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 it's a city with a very dominant infrastructure. Of course, it's the, 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 the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. You can see all these periods of uh, urbanism and uh, architecture, not always successful in Birmingham. You can also see it here in, the, in London, but also, of course, also in Holland. And then I did discover that this was the theater, and I went to the theater in this strange way to help get there. But then when I was leaving the theater, I felt, hey, everybody is walking this line, the other pedestrian. And I, I started to walk the red line, what I call the red line, from the blue ring, the south exit, green street. Uh, but if you walk this red line, you almost see the whole history of Birmingham, even with all the new um, uh, developments and the old canal system. We had a beautiful canal system. And I felt that this, this, this pedestrian area was almost full, felt like to me a movie, a movie of the history of the city. Um, and at the same time, what is to me very interesting, because I'm from this flat country, 
I felt like yeah, it's very hilly here. And it was very interesting for me that you have all this infrastructure because Birmingham is in the middle of the UK and you have all these trains coming and uh, coming in and out. And I was intrigued that you could go into the soil because in my country that's almost impossible or very expensive. So I was also looking at all the hills and all the heights of the soil, of the ground. This is the, the same route from Selfridge to uh, uh, Brindley, Brindley Square. Yeah. And I felt that the new building, we have, so what we had to do is this was the existing rep, the repertory theater, famous theater. We had to put it, and this was. Um, building, limestone building, and in between had to, we had to make a new library, and we could even make, even demolish the existing uh, um, uh, theater, although it was not intended, and we could make one big building. But I felt that in this whole sequence of the red line, it would be much more interesting to have a rhythm of different buildings, and to just to demolish this part of the building and make, in a way, um, three different buildings. I will show you later. And I also uh, did understand when, when we had to give our vision, they wanted to have an icon, but I said, I don't want to make an icon. Maybe, of course, it can be a beautiful building, but I don't want to make an incident. You have already so many incidents in your city. You need uh, a city of incidents, diversity, fragmentation, you need coherence. And I want to make this new building, especially for a library, what should in a way bring all the people together. I want to give, bring uh, coherence. If I look at the city of Birmingham, uh, you, you I see different materials. Huh? Where, when I observe the city, you see uh, the limestone, what was the time of the international items. Huh? They imported all these kind of palladio-like buildings uh, with limestone, but shows that the city is international at that time. I saw the red bricks and the blue bricks, of course, what you could find around the city. I also decided I don't want to make a red brick building. I saw the railroads, the viaducts, the tunnels, and the city of infrastructure, and the canal district, and the bridges. But also, you see the also see what kind of rich history of the city. Uh, but I also see craftsmanship of the industrial city. I was also in, uh, inspired by the gasometers of all these these these, these uh, patterns. As I told you, Centenary Square, the limestone building, and clean this one more up like a 60s, 70s building, and then put our building in between, although we do the, both the buildings. For me, I want to give three palazzas to Centenary Square, one really big square, but it's not really beautiful at this time. And I want to give every palazzo its own materialization. The limestone one, the filigrane, the steel and glass building, and the more like the building with his own identity. And also that these three buildings, although it's one centenary square, also a little bit influenced the, the space in front of them. Especially because this was an existing building, also limestone, but bring three two buildings together. This one, what is I also want to, as I told you, this idea, I want to make something, a hole in the ground, what connects to our building. And this is more a uh, um, the theater, it's also more theater-like event space front of the theater. I didn't want to make a building like an office block, so I want to uh, almost seduce people to come in in, in a nice, in a dynamic journey. And this was the first idea. Uh, also, I know that also UK people are rather traditional, more traditional. So there was this idea of book world tumblers and how it connects with escalators. And at the end, you could say maybe the star. That was the first idea. And how to connect these works on that public group. Another thing was very important, as I showed you, the red line. This is the red line, all the people walking there. I had the idea if I make here a big canopy, it's a semi sided square. It also protects you from the rain, what is quite important here in the UK, also in Holland. But also, if I make a hole there, what's also something happening here, already the re people walk, although they don't walk through my building, they walk through my space, the space that influences me. And that was inspired by this idea that I could go in the soil. 
touches kind of thing. The music brings sit around it. This is space we're now making. So the music ring kind of thing. People on the red line, they walk outside through my building. To make city terraces. I don't know if you again is that with the Birmingham. We have so many grey roofs also here in the UK, so it was also the idea to bring green terraces to the city. Every library is different. What is very specific and unique of the library of um, Birmingham is really the social heart of the city. It's, it's, it's a theatre and another theatre. It's a city archive. This one is a city archive. Uh, the business and learning centre. So people can learn English language or they know how to uh, make your own CV or just like this. A gallery, the Shakespeare Memorial, what is the existing space, what we have to in, uh, also put into our own building, the Rap Theater. Uh, so it becomes really the social heart of the city. And how to, where to put what? Uh, one interesting thing for me was. Uh, as I told you, I was fascinated that you could go into the soil without touching the water. But there was also an emotional discussion with the uh, uh, librarian. Like, they didn't want the archive to be what you could call on the lower ground floor or the cellar, because that was emotionally not the right spot for them. Because maybe there is water, although there was no water. So what we did, we put the archive here, high, in a way showcasing them. And use this space much more for uh, public and put Shakespeare which is an existing space on top of our building. This is the whole arrangement of functions. The music zone, because my idea was that you even if you walk here on the red line you can even hear things, you can hear performance as well. Children's library, they can even use this space so sometimes on the weekend. Beauty week, vision learning, reader services. Gallery, the terrace, open research, archive, staff, Shakespeare. The wrapping of the whole building and all these functions with the steel filigree. It has a 1.2 meter dip, uh, uh, distance to the, to the to the building. So I could give it its own map realization. Looking back from the city square to the centenary square, we're trying to make proposals also for the square itself, but of course now there's more a financial crisis in these kind of cities, in European cities. The idea of the glass facade with the frieze that also in a way embraces it, is that the Just on, it gives nice shadows. We now making mock-ups of the, I think still over the bigger picture of the tree. I also showed them in the existing procedure of Birmingham, you have these circles and how to get nice shadows. The section of the rotondas, in a way, is the heart of the building and the most important uh, space, but it's also, um, the, of course, you have to be brim actually. It's also part of the whole ventilation system of the building natural and mechanical system. And also for me, it's also part of this identity of a, of a UK library, what is more traditional than, for instance, a Dutch or a, of a Scandinavian library. And to combine these kind of, also in a way what we did in Delft, combine it uh, to make it a unique space. And you see some of, the, of these uh, renderings now. I, I will show you the movie. It's very dramatic. This is on the third floor of where we, we look now from the city terrace back to the void, the book and how you enter. And here is here is going a hole through the archive for the clothes and use the, these closed walls to uh, have an art uh, exhibition. Space or foyers here. Uh, then 
the construction now. This was, I think, a month ago. You can see that this will be closed again. Cameron was already here last week. Do you see this idea of the music zone with the empty outdoor amphitheater? How you look, I, I really like this perspective, how you look back to the building. I mean, what is really a public building. I just show you some of the lab of physical distance and learning and how this idea of the circles and the rotondas go through the building. This is where you enter the book rotunda on level two. <coughs> and of course, the, 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 the book rotunda has their own level. For me, working in the UK and health and safety was a very dominant uh, thing, what I had to learn. The terraces, the research and archives, and Heritage part. Do you see the archive? And now you can see this is the closed part as the golden box on the inside uh, is, a, is a closed rotunda. And there is a small um, lift going up to it. Staff with all the meeting rooms. And people can go also to this terrace. Herbal garden outfit for the senses, the garden for the senses. And on top of that, level nine is the Shakespeare Memorial Room, what is an existing interior, what we put in here, and what will be open to the public. Too. I'm always there, so they made a big wall with uh, me explaining to all the citizens the whole building. If the whole world was a library, every street a book, every country a trilogy, imagine what I could do. I always say in the rotunda, in this hotel.
When you um, go to a library, you are potentially discovering a new world. Taiwan. I had never been in Taiwan, like I had never been in uh, Birmingham. Um, Taiwan is here in front of mainland China. It used to have a very difficult relationship between Taiwan and China. This is Taipei. The second city is Kaohsiung. This part of the, of the country is almost the size of the Netherlands. A little bit more people. Uh, we have 60 million or 70 million people. They have 21 million people. This is Subtropical and this part is tropical. Second city, as I told you, specialized in second city. Um, used to be the fifth harbor of the world, not anymore. And what, what is so for me fascinating, because it also has to do with the, the relationship with China and Taiwan, um, uh, Taiwan decided not to spend so much money on. 
fighting on the uh, and on defense, but more on um, uh, art or culture. So what they did, this is a, is a, a piece of land almost one by one kilometer. It used to be the military compound where most of the young people of Taiwan uh, uh, had, uh, had been there for two or three months. They decided uh, to open it, of course this was a uh, gated community, to skip this military compound. Uh, you can see here all the barracks and to open it, make it into a park and put the performing arts center, a big performing uh, arts center in it. We went there and we, we saw of not only the barracks, but we saw all the trees, especially the banyan tree. And a banyan tree, a tropical tree. In a way, this is one tree. It's a tree that grows and grows and grows in a very horizontal way. In a way, again, to protect it from the sun and to protect it from the rain. And what we did is to make a kind, to try to make a kind of tropical building to transform the banyan trees in the building. That was our idea. To make a new public and our idea was one strategy. Park and performing arts center are one concept, one entity. Go into the park, go into the performing arts center, and you can even walk through our building. These are the Banyan trees. As I told you, it's huge. It's concert hall, 200 and 300 chairs, a lyric theater opera, 2,000 chairs, and what there used to be a black box, it's now even 800 chairs, and a playhouse of 1,000, I think now it's even 1,200. And an open air theater. Our idea is to get, of course, a concert hall and a lyric of something totally different to get everyone its own identity with its own foyer and put on top of these theaters, of this uh, building, of this um, auditoria, one roof and where the roof hits the park becomes an open air theater. That was the idea. And then put it in the park and you can walk through a building like in a tropical roof. So there's no glass around it, you can just, of course all these buildings are all air conditioned, but in between it's all tropical building. We even made posters for the park. Again, the functionality, again, eccentric. Um, here you see these four big auditoria. You can walk in between. And for us also symbolized when I was looking at all these people in, in, in Kaohsiung was a very pleasant, informal, tropical city. Everybody was underneath the trees uh, as soon as, uh, uh, because it's otherwise also too hot there. Uh, so he was also building, like he also did the say, not going only to the, the theater where you have to pay a ticket or whatever, but also to provide space for uh, informal free events. Just for the, again, a public building by public money, uh, you should do it. Again, flow and serving, yes, uh, serving the public is very important. How to organize the installations, the loading, unloading, and that they don't crush. Sandwich construction again, um, the base, this backstage area, the loading docks, then we have the dome with the different uh, spaces, and in, in the roof is more the staff and artists floor, and on top it's the roof landscape with the We made all these spaces not in the most easy way, like boxes, but we made a, a big concert hall like a, a vineyard, all around, everybody around the piano player. So this is all indoor space, this is outdoor, the Banyan Plaza. Again, restaurant is indoor and this is outdoor. The, the Lyric, what is the biggest space, because of all this is all, it's huge, even bigger than the one in uh, Beijing, of course. And also, when I observe the people, you know, they really like uh, artificial life. Uh, Taiwan is like China. But also, really like it's, it's tropical. It, it means at six o'clock it's dark. So the artificial light is very important. So we made a totally white building, but we wanted that building to change by changing the light. <laughs>
longer. Um, this is a picture made when, uh, at the moment, we win the competition. Uh, Zaha Hadid was second, I remember. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, but it's also, at this moment, maybe you see my face, you know, you, you, you don't understand anybody. You're all too tiny. Uh, did you remember? Or not that you remember, but it is all too thin. And certain moment, uh, might know. And then you heard the one. And they think, oh, what the hell, you know, I'm how, uh, uh, you always first get, uh, I say, the hot shower and then the cold shower. How, how are you going to organize this? Uh, so we took the time to organize it. Um, we had some European consultants, but we also had to give over partly to the uh, Taiwan uh, consultants. Uh, and of course, we had to learn each other, but if, if the image works okay, and we're happy. Uh, construction engineers, it will all be a steel construction. Uh, also, the don't forget about all the technical um, how to organize all these uh, thi the theater techniques. We do it with combinations of Dutch firm in combination with the Taiwan firm. This is the interior study of, of maybe the most complex hall is the concert hall. Again, it's a, a combination with the French and European consultants with, with, with Taiwanese, back ta ta Taiwanese background in combination with it. Here you see that we are building the hall um, concert hall scale 1 to 20 it could be for, uh, to uh, check the acoustics that's the only possibility how you can control the acoustics this is also that model this was first and then the second you always kind of see if it's a rending or reality this is reality it's a scale 1 to 20 it's on the sideline um, we're looking how exactly to make the uh, outdoor seating area and the end, they really want to have uh, uh, like the library in there of grass, but that's really impossible in, in this city. And it would also make it, you have a lot of rain in combination with a lot of sun. So at the end, people will make it uh, out of wood because we think it's more pleasant. Um, I also want to share with you this the, 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 the piece of Banyan we made because uh, uh, we were working at this moment at the Delft building and the uh, and the Taiwan, and we were asked to make a pavilion, and we said, okay, well let's make just a piece of Banyan. And we, we scaled it down, we took a piece of our building, scaled it down one to four, and we had to work together with a, a, a tile industry, and we started to develop our own pattern, uh, what you could repeat, almost like Chinese fracolé, and they made it specially for us, and because I always had the idea, I want to do something with tiles, so maybe we will use this experiment maybe if you have the money and it was also was a kind of unique experience it was it was in Milano and Milano it was raining so hard uh, so they could not finish it because it was so wet that otherwise the tiles would come down and th they stopped here but at the same time I really like this edge it's almost feel like an, uh, a chicken coming out of a At the same time, we experiment already with our uh, Taiwan light consultants by changing the light and how that could work in uh, Taiwan. So it's a mixture of Taiwanese Delft uh, experience in Milano. It was there just for two weeks, but I really loved it. Another thing what we are doing by crossing borders is, as I told you, it's a, it used to be the fifth harbor of the world. And the idea is to make the inside the Banyan Plaza space, uh, is the idea to make it with uh, the ship industry, make it steel, that part of the building. So now we are on, on the side of the, of the shipyard. I could just test how to make uh, these, uh, I could just make, make it like this. And I would also like more uh, the roughness should be kind of almost like a ship-like building. And also that we want to put the text eh, of, of concert or whatever in this kind of uh, language. So it's a, it's a kind of, um, we also don't have the budget, otherwise it should be a, a, a rough building, but belongs to that, the 
public of uh, culture. This was the opening, what was the opening ceremony, yeah, the starting, the, the groundbreaking ceremony. This is the Minister of Culture, I think already the fifth one in here. This, year. this is the Prime Minister. And these are all the music players, what are for them very important and famous people for these kind of people. This is how it looks now. Recent rendering. We also do the. We don't do the whole park. We just do the park around us, but it's already as big as the, the Belma Park in Amsterdam. It's under construction now. Can you imagine? Yeah. This is a lot of rain. And this I wanted to share with you. This like um, this idea of Dutch mouse and how I make also Dutch mouse and use the soil in other countries. Um, for me, it's also uh, kind of looking for identity in a world of globalization, that you don't get all these buildings that you in, or in all these countries, and at the same time create an unforgettable collective space um, for a public building with public money. I believe there's little space maybe for one or two questions. Um, hello, I would like to ask that, um, I mean, your office is dealing with all these uh, public projects of such a scale. And you mentioned in the beginning that you're doing one or two um, private residences throughout the year. Do you see it as a testing ground for ideas that you then move to other projects, or is it much more of a break from you know, um, the demands of these type of projects? Uh, sometimes they take as much energy as one big building, so uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's just fun to do that. But, uh, do they inform each other problems? I think what is interesting, because I now only show public buildings, but we also do, as I told you, parks, and these projects, they influence each other. Like, as I told you, I learned a lot by being well connected to the theater world. And as you can see, maybe in my work, there's also kind of, of theater way of thinking in my building. <coughs> or sometimes I, I like to work, uh, if I, I, sometimes my work is typically, like, I always like movies, like to make movies. Uh, uh, they all influence each other. And I think what one thing, what is all coherence in these all these buildings that most of the buildings, especially because uh, the buildings made in Holland, but even the one in Taiwan in, and in um, Spain, they're not really high budget. So we also have a kind of, uh, and, I, and it's also fun to do it, so you really have to go you know, kind of back to basics, how to realize things, how to, uh, I also really like this idea that a public building is for the public, with public money, you know, it's like you, you give something, you give a present back to the public. Not my presence, it's their presence, and it goes through my yeah, and the whole team of the office it goes through our hands, and we give it back. That's an important issue. And of course, the, the thing with a, a private house, I always say, there's something to me totally different because it's I just do it for one person. It can be beautiful, it can be ugly, but it doesn't really influence the city. So it's almost like a, you know, a little thing. Uh, and I love to do them, and it costs a lot of energy. But all spy, yeah, they don't take five years. But sometimes it's, yeah, it's, it's not that fast, it doesn't go quicker. But I also like this little thing of the, the, the chapel uh, we made on the 22nd, where we started to work with the curved forms, or to use a very strong blue, or, or yeah, I like this. And now we did in Peter Cup, we use a very strong red color. <laughs> so we, yeah, I like festivity. But also, maybe that's what I learned from the theater world. If you don't have so much money, and I don't have a normal cost of it. And I'm happy. Francine, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, we will have a drink upstairs in the bar. And if you do too, then uh, I don't know. We could have another chat. Um, so.
Thank you all for joining us as well here.